So, um, well, um, today I'm going to be joined by Sergio Mendoza and we're going to present uh, the current and future challenges in pricing. Uh, I'm going to present the current challenges and Sergio is going to present the future challenges, at least on our view. Um, the reason we're presenting this is because, well, we, we at Orange Guru, uh, we do specialize in pricing intelligence. So some of the things that you will do, we gather that information with, with our technology. I'm going to explain a little bit about that as well. So uh, the first thing uh, I'm going to start talking about, it's about how uh, a part of the upside of traditional pricing has been lost over the past years because of different trends. So uh, there are a lot of things that have been going on, but these are the three main things that we wanted to talk about. The first one is the pressure of the low-cost carriers on full-service airlines. Uh, we do love low-cost carriers, but one of the things that they have, these have caused is uh, they have totally eroded the fair fences on the classical fair structures, and that has caused some um, uh, um, eroding in the revenues. So we think that is one, one of the things that uh, have impacted the traditional revenue as we used to know it. The second one is uh, how the um, passengers have gained a lot of control on the information. They, they have more information and they have information faster than before. They even probably have more information than the pricing analyst that, input, that is putting the prices. And that is very important when you analyze things like filing errors. 15 years ago when you had a filing error, uh, okay, you could spend the night with a bad price over there. And uh, you will get some impact, but it wouldn't be that much, 100, 200 tickets. Today, you made that mistake, and you can lose $4 million in one night. Thousands of tickets sold, and uh, this is basically because this began up trending in Twitter. Everyone knows about it, and everyone starts buying, and you don't even know it until the next day. And the third one is uh, how traditional revenue have shifted to ancillary revenues. Um, this is very good for the airline. It's a way to decommoditize the airline. I think it's a very important step to that. But um, the problem is that you don't have very good algorithms to handle this. So, for example, Felix was telling that they, they make 30% of the revenues in ancillary. So if they sell those better, they would even make more money without even sell more. It's just selling better. So that's another, another trend. So this were the benefits of differential pricing calculated by POT some years ago. We think that this has shifted a lot, but this was the original thing. So how, uh, what points do we have to attack to recover those, uh, uh, that value? So we think that it concentrates in six different, six different points. One is a slowness, so long time to markets are a reality in the industry, and we're showing you some data on that. The second one is inaccuracy for filing errors. The third one is incompleteness. So pricing analysts don't have time or tools to be able to tackle all of the markets. So the long tail of markets are left behind. Uh, Suboptimality, no optimization for the first structure. And this is, this is an important issue because airlines have these big systems to optimize everything but the first structure, which is where everything started. Though that first structure is put by an analyst with a manual tool and then you optimize over that. So is there a way to optimize that? We'll see. And uh, also ancillary uh, is the same thing. It's not optimized. Is there a good way to do it? The fifth one is degradation on fair fencing, as uh, I told you before. And the sixth is information entropy, which I think has been an historical problem, but it's basically the problem of putting all the information in one place so the analysts can make better decisions or the automated system can take more information in order to respond. Um, I'm going to touch some of these points. This is one. This is the time to market. Uh, this is real data. We have hidden the names of the airlines, uh, trying to avoid hurting any sensibilities. But we can see the time to market of airlines is between 15 hours and 50 hours. So when we started this project, we thought that it was going to be around 10 hours. And then we saw the data, and it's much worse. So there is a big opportunity here. We can discuss later how we calculate this. Basically, we use big data and atypical uh, information in order to do so. We can see other things as well. For example, Friday, almost double the time to market of the rest of the week. And this is a reflection of how manual the systems are today, how old and manual they are. And this is just because on Friday, if someone doesn't do anything, that is going to stay there all the weekend. 
I mean, uh, with all this artificial intelligence thing, dynamic pricing and so on, and we can't even solve that yet. So there is a, a lot of opportunities to do today. The other thing is uh, for filing errors. Again, we have hidden all the, all the names here, but this was a real case. Uh, and it's a very dumb case, but it's also a reflection of how old or how bad the firm management systems are. This was a first structure that was taken away and they put a whole new first structure, but they made the mistake of putting the wrong currency. So instead of putting dollars, they put Chilean pesos. So one dollar is 680 Chilean pesos. So they end up selling tickets at two dollars plus taxes. This sold thousands of tickets it became a trend in Twitter, and the same story, millions of dollar losses in just one night. Um, the other data that we have on some of the problems that I already mentioned is the coverage. This is pretty interesting. This is uh, how airlines are tackling each market. So what we do here is we detect all the markets that each of these airlines have um, based on the, on, the, on the fares they have on those. And then we see how often they change those fares. So the gray zone are markets in which they haven't changed fares in six months. So there is a lot of buzz about dynamic pricing, about continuous pricing, but we, we are not covering those. So that's much more simple than implement a dynamics pricing strategy, and there is a lot of money in those. Um, so how can we recover the lost value? Well, we believe there is technology today and we're trying to implement that in different ways. One example of how we implemented a streamlined price process using new technology with an airline, uh, gathering information into the same place, putting real-time alerts, showing the information in a better way, automating some of the tedious work the pricing line has to do every day, and we managed to decrease time to market by 30%. That is also, that is already a big step. We still have a lot to do, but it's a, it's a very big step. The second one is prevention. Um, technology today allows you to understand what are the prices that you're going to publish before you publish them. This is an example of a fair builder tool that we have in which the analysts can actually define the, the new price strategy, but the, the system will emulate the new price and will compare that price to the lowest actual price that there is today and will warn the analyst if there is a problem or will, um, or will detect this as an error and won't let him uh, publish. So that is another way in which you can, you can save some money and regain that value. And last but not least is the first structure optimization. Um, Sergio is going to talk a little bit more about that. But uh, doing some simple simulations, you can see uh, that just by optimizing a first structure, you can gain a, 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 very important, um, a, a very important figure of revenue. You can see there that by optimizing this single first structure with three steps, we can make 2.2% more of revenue to the bottom line. Uh, Tools to do that. This is an example of one visual tool that we use to help analysts to optimize those first structure or at least get closer to the optimum, in which instead of reading all the categories and restrictions that ATPCO has, which is very critical and hard, with this tool they can have a heat map in which they see the price levels and also how, they're, how they are compared to the main competitor, let's say and understand in which demand segments they have a problem, in which demand segments they are higher, uh, they have a very high price or a too much high price or a too low, lower price, and then they can correct that. Um, so this technology exists today and it's really helpful to uh, tackle some of those problems that we talked before. And last but not least is uh, integrating information in the same place. So we have uh, been able to gather a lot of information about pricing, about KPIs of the, of the airlines themselves, but we wanted to put everything in the same place so the analysts can easily take decisions, can have all the information there to understand what is happening in the overall. And here's an example of that. You have market share, revenue information, you have alerts of the movement of competitors, how much time it's taking to you to respond to them, and so on. Uh, so we believe there is a lot of opportunities, and this is just for the current state of pricing. I'm going to leave you with uh, Sergio now, who is going to talk a little about the future of pricing. Uh, so thank you, please. Thank you, Javier. So as Javier said, we have huge opportunities and 
current state of the art. However, everybody is talking about the future. And uh, we are also thinking about the future and have, uh, we have our own uh, vision about the future. And uh, we are discussing that with some of our uh, airline customers. So the future is continuous transactional pricing. We are gonna explain, we're going to explain a little bit what is that. So uh, con by continuous transactional pricing, we mean real-time pricing, continuous price ladders, optimum offer and price, optimum segmentation, consistency between the prices of bundles and ancillary revenue, a one-step optimization of prices and inventory. Prices and inventory are, a single, uh, are part of a single optimization function. When you change prices, inventory gets affected immediately and vice versa. If you restrict inventory, the optimum price changes immediately. That's a mathematical relationship. So why do we optimize these two things separate today? Actually, we don't optimize prices, we just optimize inventory. So that's, that's, that's going to be solved by transactional continuous pricing. Automated, we expect a lot of automation in the future vision of pricing, and decentralized distribution. If we compare this with traditional pricing on the left side, there's a huge, a huge gap. That's what we call the chasm. And the question is, how do we cross this chasm without disrupting current airlines, commercial processes, and revenue streams. We don't want to lose money in this uh, migration from current paradigm to the future paradigm. We need to work on infrastructure, functionality, and processes to build a bridge between these two paradigms. And this bridge is going to be worked by vendors Many vendors are already working on the pieces of this bridge in the infrastructure level. Other vendors are working, like Anguru, are working on the functionality layer. We need to build capabilities like real-time pricing, elasticity modeling, continuous pricing, dynamic offer generation and optimization in order to get from the left side to the right side. And the good news is that this can be done gradually. We can build a roadmap that takes the airline gradually from the left side to the right side. Why transactional continuous pricing? Well, with transactional continuous pricing, you get a much more granular level of segmentation and price differentiation that you do not get with traditional pricing. You can optimize prices in real time uh, including inventory and offers. You get better ancillary pricing and you can make it consistent with the prices of bundles. And finally, and it's not uh, less important, it's, a it's based on a decentralized distribution model, which is probably uh, uh, lowering cost for the airline, an important uh, issue for all airlines. But the most important one is do we produce extra revenue with uh, continuous uh, pricing, continuous real-time pricing? Well, we don't know. We don't know yet. We may even destroy uh, value if we don't do this right. New technologies are dangerous if you don't e execute them right, especially if, the, if you don't have control of what they are doing. But, but you can see simulations out there, and we did our own very basic simulation that you can do in Excel. What we did we do? We started with a three-level optimum fare structure on a linear deterministic demand function. Very simple. And we assume that there is perfect fare fencing of the uh, demand. Okay? So that on the left side, it generates, in this example, $39,947 as revenue. If we move into a 10-level fare structure and with the same assumptions, what happens? Well, we get more revenue because we're able to better segment demand. 4.6% extra revenue from moving to three, from three levels to 10 levels and so on. This is just to show that in the traditional pricing, we can make more, money, uh, more uh, revenue by uh, incorporating more fair levels if we do the segmentation right. 
Now, what happens when we jump from a discrete fare structure into a continuous fare structure? Well, we get some additional revenue. For in this example, from 10 levels to a continuous fare structure, we get 1.7% upside in revenue, which is not substantial, but is interesting enough for airlines. For every $1 billion in yearly revenue, an airline could make $17 million extra revenue to the bottom line of the business, which is interesting. But it's not maybe that substantial as to go and jump into the <laughs> dynamic pricing or continuous pricing uh, paradigm, because it could be uh, the opposite if you don't execute this well. You could lose 2%, 5%, whatever, if you don't execute this right. So this is just to remind uh, you what is the classical current approach to dynamic, to dynamic pricing. So several airlines are already doing dynamic pricing. Sorry, I have to run. OK, sorry, two, two slides. Uh, so this is our vision of the end game. We see the end game as a deep reinforced learning machine fed with several data sources with the aim to maximize net revenue. You have to train this machine, and the machine will be able to generate the dynamic offers in a single optimization process. But that's crazy. So we propose this incremental approach, taking the good things about the legacy uh, paradigm of pricing, improving on the left side uh, some of those things, and adding a dynamic pricing engine that will do the rest, the continuous pricing on the transactional level. We do uh, uh, optimization in the classical uh, traditional fare structure and then add the continuous pricing at the transactional level. And that's it. I will jump to the conclusions. There is a huge uh, opportunity still in traditional uh, pricing. There is a bright future for pricing for airlines. An incremental approach is what we, uh, what we recommend to airlines to reduce risk. And we need support from airlines uh, because we are willing to invest in these things, but uh, we're not, we cannot go along with this. Thank you. I'm sorry for that.